I'm Indy Nidell. And I'm Joachim from Sabaton, and this is Sabaton History. The Battle of Shiroyama was a major turning point in Japanese history, where the samurai, heavily outnumbered, made a heroic stand and counterattack against the Japanese army, showing their legendary skills for the world to see in their final fight. And our song, Shiroyama, is not only about that battle, but also a tribute to the ancient code of honor, Bushido. Now, in a minute, he's going to tell you a bit about the song, but first, I'm going to tell you the history. In the 7th century, Japan took a major step towards an era of feudalism with a series of reforms. Not really going to go into it here, but these not only reformed the classes, they also redistributed land among local lords, who in turn taxed much of the local population to live and work on said land. Over the centuries, those feudal lords eventually became rich and powerful, though that was not the reform plan, and the emperors became more or less figureheads. To defend their position and their wealth, the lords depended upon skilled warriors who called themselves Bushi. We call them samurai. The lords built their power bases with their own private armies, and early medieval Japan saw clans and families rise and fall as they fought for power. A new era began in the late 12th century when a clan leader named Yoritomo seized power and proclaimed himself shogun, and this elevated the importance of the bushi to a higher level as the military arm of Japan and a new warrior caste was officially born. The era of the samurai would last for hundreds of years, and you can look up all the ups and downs of the power of the shoguns versus the regional warlords, the daimyo, for yourselves. The samurai were not simply armed thugs that pushed around the locals, not for the most part, anyhow. They usually bound their lives to a code of honor and merit. One such set of rules to live by, next to the Book of Five Rings and the Hagakure, was the Bushido. The Bushido speaks of a code of morality and principles that every honorable samurai must follow to be respected and valued in Japanese society. Central themes, next to the mastery of martial arts, are honesty, dignity, and loyalty to their master. It's the nature of time that the old ways must give in. It's the nature of time that the new ways come since in. Well into the 19th century, the samurai class, within the rigid Japanese class system, remained powerful and enjoyed the privileges given them by the daimyo. But as the 19th century progressed, the shogunate was challenged by new ideas and social reforms and was finally toppled by the imperial Meiji Restoration in 1868. Mutsuhito, the Meiji emperor, aimed to revolutionize Japan by adopting Western ideals. He pushed democratic reforms and established a constitutional monarchy. This broke the feudal structure and sabotaged the existence of the samurai. By abandoning the old caste system, and caste isn't really the right word, but class isn't really either. Anyhow, hundreds of thousands of samurai, some sources say up to two million, were suddenly out of a job. And worse for them, they were now socially equal to the common man, as the law now made all men commoners. This turned the whole social hierarchy upside down. Japan was by then under increasing pressure from the Western colonial powers. European and American ships were already probing the Far East to exploit potential weaknesses. And Japan had to shed its old skin and enter the modern era or fall behind, opening the country to modern technology and ideas. By any standard, Meiji saved Japan from the fate of the continental Southeast Asian states that ended up either colonized or torn apart like China. His main foreign policy achievement was to strengthen Japan to the point that they could resist the unequal treaties. The reforms he carried out on the home front contributed to this substantially. The emperor's new conscript army, for example, would rely on mass firepower instead of individual skill with the sword, and it would answer only to the central government, with no allegiances to local lords. There were many powerful clan leaders that supported the emperor as it was their traditional duty. One such man was Saigo Takamori. He had played a large part in the Meiji Restoration and supported modernizing Japan's military. But he also hoped the samurai could still hold on to their power in the countryside. 
this was not to be. And Saigo left his post as an imperial military advisor and retreated to his own domain of Satsuma Kagoshima on the southern Japanese island of Kyushu. As a new age begins, the way of the warrior comes to an end. As a new age begins, the way so bold must apprehend. Now, he was opposed to the new structures of Japanese society, but did not seek a confrontation with the emperor's rule. Instead, he kept the ideas of Bushido and the samurai alive in his own schools and dojos. Side note here, contrary to popular belief, the samurai did adopt new technologies. In fact, Clan Satsuma was famous for its artillery school. Okay. It was soon obvious that imperial officials loyal to Saigo were unofficially supplying his schools with ammunition and military-grade weapons, and this, this raised deep concerns at the imperial high court. Investigators were sent out, and these openly accused Saigo of preparing a rebellion. This was an insult to Saigo's students, and some of them committed local acts of violence against government officials. By 1877, this spiraled into open war between the samurai forces of Satsuma and the Imperial Japanese Army. Saigo gathered warriors and students loyal to him and marched out of Kagoshima in early February to meet the approaching Imperial Army in the field. But he made a strategic mistake that doomed the rebellion from the start. He wanted to first take Kumamoto Castle, one of the strongest castles in all of Japan, north of his realm of influence. He thought it would surrender to him without a fight. But the officers of the castle remained loyal to the emperor. As he laid siege to the castle in winter conditions, the imperial army arrived. Both sides were initially around 10,000 troops each. And for two months, the battles raged mostly in close combat with swords and bayonets, and the losses were in the thousands. But the Imperial Army, under General Aritomo Yamagata, an old colleague and friend of Saigo, could easily replace conscripts by the hundreds, while samurai warriors, who had trained their whole lives with their weapons, could not do so at all. Despite their far greater skill on an individual level, the rebels were forced to retreat. Still. It was a fighting retreat, and the remaining samurai waged a relentless guerrilla war, but they could not run forever. By September, it was only Saigo and 400 of his samurai who managed to slip through the imperial lines and make their way back to their capital of Satsuma, taking refuge on the heights of Hill Shiroyama. It did not take long for the imperials to catch up, and General Yamagata was determined to finally capture Saigo and crush the rebellion once and for all. He ordered his men, some 30,000 strong by this point, to lay siege to the heights. They surrounded Shiroyama with a complex system of earthworks, trenches, and barricades. Yamagata sent out an envoy with a letter demanding Saigo's unconditional surrender. That letter shows the deep affection and respect the Imperial General held for his friend, and you can read the letter in the description. Saigo true to the nature of Bushido, could not accept surrender and denied Yamagata's request. See, for the samurai, surrendering was the most shameful thing they could do. A warrior was not just remembered by how he lived, fought, and served. He was also judged by the way he met his end. Death, even in defeat, could be the most honorable and glorious act of a samurai's life. And after all, death is inevitable, but giving up or losing heart in the face of defeat is not is unacceptable. Knowing the end was near, Saigo and his men spent their final days singing songs, writing poetry, and playing games while the Imperial Army prepared its assault. Its artillery began to fire at midnight as September 24th began. The samurai wished each other farewell and shared a last cup of sake. At 3 a.m., Imperial infantry stormed up the hill. The samurai charged, forcing them into close combat. Now, they could not hope to match the skill of the samurai and took huge casualties, and their lines fell into disarray, but numbers were on their side. By 6 a.m., only 40 of the samurai were still alive. Saigo himself had been mortally wounded, probably from a bullet to the stomach or the hip, though that is uncertain. The legend goes, that he was carried back up the hill by one of his closest friends. As they found a quiet spot, Saigo turned one last time in the direction of the Imperial Palace, bowed, 
and then got to his knees. He committed seppuku, the traditional suicide, by slicing the abdomen open to preserve his honor. His friend cut off Saigo's head with one stroke and hid it somewhere on the mountain. In the morning sun of September 24, 1877, the remaining 40 samurai met their fate in one final suicidal charge into the imperial lines. All of them were cut down by gunfire. The defeat at Shiroyama not only meant the end of the Satsuma Rebellion, but the end of the samurai. Japan had entered a new era where such warriors had no place. From now on, the Japanese would wage war with an army made of recruits from all classes and all backgrounds. Saigo Takamori remains a tragic hero whose dedication and skill will always be remembered as examples of the best of his kind, the samurai and his code, the Bushido. Shiroyama, the song, obviously is going to have a certain meaning for Japanese fans and stuff. Do you guys play in Japan? Yes, uh, we played there four times since 2015, actually. All right, Tokyo! And what about before that? Uh, never. Really? <laughs> yeah. okay. We never had the timing. We always wanted to go, but it just never happened. But uh, the song Shiroyama, that was... a. Uh, sort of an unexpected like big crowd pleaser for you guys right yeah i it was i was really happy because i really liked the song it's got this kind of 80s movie theme uh, you know vibe to it not only the japanese but fans from all over the world took it sort of to their hearts so even while we were on the last stand tour which shiriyama is from it actually made its way to the encores at the end because it was so popular and that is really not and not being a single yeah and not being, being a single that's what people want and from the new album you know yeah so Thank you for that, fans. That was so. What would amazing. what would an encore be uh, on the last stand tour? What what? How many two or three songs? What do you guys do as an encore? On the last run of this tour, we did uh, usually Primo Victoria as the first one could be, and then into Shiroyama, yeah. and then finishing up with uh, To Hell and Back. To Hell and Back. Yeah, that's fantastic. See, now you guys learned something that you did not know about Sabaton. Although some of you probably did know that. Yes. So, everyone who went to the concerts, actually. Yeah, everyone's like, <laughs> I went. I had to, Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> all right, well, once again, Shiriyama is on the Last Stand album. And that's all for today. But we will see you next time and every time on Sabaton History. All right, soldiers, you know the drill. Subscribe, Sabaton History, regular Sabaton, World War II, and Time Ghost. Playlist, click, click now, soldier! And now, Patreon. Good one. And on the ground, and give me 20.